Before we introduce Tad, uh, who's going to be talking to us about Forgotten Runes Wizards Cult, I want to highlight a video that I made. It's a quick two minute one here about their, uh, I don't know if we call it pre alpha beta uh, experience. Play test would probably be the correct term uh, for Forgotten Runes. Uh, so here's kind of a quick lowdown of what it looks like. Today we're diving into the realm of Forgotten Runes Wizards Cult, or otherwise their game Runiverse. If you're a fan of RuneScape, if you're a fan of MMORPGs, pixel like type games this might be for you it is nighttime but it's almost midday where i am so you can either move by clicking or with the wasd uh and then these are the different uh ways to talk hello so the forge is here we're forging forging and we're forging harder what it looks like there's a cap on the items where it's not an incredibly large amount of items and thinking back to runescape that was one of the things where it's like okay the options aren't unlimited where you can actually memorize the amount of armor, weapons, etc., you can get, which I think is kind of cool. Call of the Flame. We get an enchant. Deal medium physical damage to enemy with a slight chance to burn them. So these are the different statuses that will have effects within battle. So empower, increase damage dealt, slow, decrease the speed, regen, recover a small amount of HP at the start of each turn. The combat system is interesting where there's an action bar kind of at the end of this bar, or it is an action bar, but you're able to perform an action at the end of it, and you'll see how it kind of slides across here. You're also able to equip with several different skills where you can either just press the skills individually or click the one, two, three, or four key to make them activated. There's a quick little look at Forgotten Rooneyverse. Curious what you guys have to say. This is only kind of like a- Not bad, not bad. There's a quick little look on that one. All right, W, let me call up Tad here. We're going to get into this. And this is, you know, he's just a community member. He's hanging out. He's just like Phil Baca. We are going to dive into the things that we love, just like, et cetera. Oh, yo, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hey, how are you? I can hear a little bit of a stream in the background. I don't think it's me, just an FYI, but you sound clear. How, how's your day going, boss? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I was uh, I was still streaming that uh, the Twitter space, so I just closed that down. So we Amazing, getting echo. caught up. No, I just wanted to check. Okay, so actually, give me the lowdown. What were you listening to just before? Oh, actually, were you listening to Twitter space of this? Uh, yeah, I was on the, the Schiller Twitter space. Hey, right there now. we go. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving and grooving. All right. So, Tad, we're here and we're going to be talking about Forgotten Runes Wizards Cult. It's something that I've followed a little bit, but not too in-depthly, if you will. And so I want to pick your brain about things that you've loved, maybe disliked, and kind of the uh, expectations, I guess, you have for Forgotten Runes. But give us a little bit of your story about how you got into Web3 and why Forgotten Runes of all the different NFTs out there ended up uh, getting your attention. Um. So I guess I, I started really doing my Web3 journey in this early 21. Uh, I was doing a little bit of DeFi, crypto trading, um, paying, paying attention to like the early days of uh, the food farms and alchemy and that kind of stuff. And then that was kind of when all the NFT stuff was just getting started. Um, of course, saw me bits, me bits and, and board apes minting and things happening, but I wasn't quite familiar enough with the space to be comfortable to put money in. and. Um, and then I guess I found the Forgotten Ruins team about a week before their mint process. And it was it was the second thing that I minted. I actually minted a strawberry WTF uh, maybe just a couple of days before. So it's not my very first mint, but a very, very early minting project for me. Um, it was just, it, it resonated for a lot of different reasons. The, the Discord just had a, a good energy, a good vibe. Um, it was fairly early in my process of, of really digging deep into Discord. So... It was my first time really getting that, not the very first time, but an early opportunity of, of seeing the, the the insides of how projects work and, and being able to talk to devs and other people involved in it. And uh, it was really enticing. And the the pixel art and the just the nostalgia that came from it was was hard to shake. So I, you know, I decided I wanted to give it a shot. And I, I remember the the mint day. I was actually I had a, an errand I was running and I, I left early. Really. Um, was kind of rude to the person I was with because I was like, I've really got to get to this mint. And I, you know, I was maybe five minutes before mint time, just sweating through like all of my clothing to spend 
I, I don't know, maybe it was $200, uh, like 0 0.07 ETH for a wizard. Uh, and I minted three that day, and it was it was to that date one of the most expensive uh, like Web three purchases I made. So it was uh, it was it was an exciting way to get started. The mint site was amazing. Uh, it was all custom made. It started on a block time and not just at a at a specific moment. So when a certain block clicked over, the site went live. Uh, there was a cool little animation of the secret tower and everything. It was it was really cool to be a part of it from the beginning. So that's kind of what. What pulled me in? I mean, I I dabbled in different um, different art projects um, before I got into the wizards, and the wizards have been one of my only community related projects that I've really been uh, deep within for a long time. I feel like um, people go and they they like get involved in a whole bunch of things, but then never like actually intend on paying attention. Like I, you know, to be honest, I kind of like the the one community collectors out there. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can lose yourself for sure. I mean, it's just kind of I, I feel that right now. I'm not doing some some different chain and airdrop farming for protocols. It's like I I, I remember things that I was like, oh, this is really high on my list. This is something that I, I think is really going to perform well. I need to make sure I pay attention to this. And then with the fatigue of, of looking at 20 or 30 different protocols in a day, you just forget about it. And, and over time, I, I feel like it dilutes out that value. And it's kind of the same with nft communities i mean you can be involved in a few different ones but if you're going to really be active or be a a part of the community in a way that's significant you know it's kind of got to be a, a small scope and you got to jump in kind of jump in with both feet i feel like so what i want to do right now is play the video of the forgotten runes official trailer that is this anime i or, i guess it's an anime but it's a uh, it is probably one of the best videos that i've seen in terms of a promotion tad you're not going to see it on your end so just an fyi it's about two minutes of silence um but for anybody on the stream here is the forgotten runes trailer if you have not seen it this is a doozy it is not the wizards who forgot the runes it's the rest of the world. This is the world with magic in it. Come on, you effing degenerates! Get up and dance! From Kalista Citadel to Cobalt's Crossroad. To Hugh Master Pass. Through chaos and calamity. Through uncertainty and fear. Through hunger, poverty and plague. of 10,000 wizards has been summoned and they are putting their mark on the world. So one of the things that's interesting about that is for anybody that would be watching and you're not really familiar with it, you wouldn't realize that they've actually highlighted some of the character traits uh, that were in there. As an example, the guy with the triangle head is called Illuminatus or Illuminati. It's one of the traits. I'm just trying to bring it up here on uh right quick da, ba, ba, yeah illuminatus uh, illuminatus yes so this is like an example of one of them and obviously people are uh pricing it at a point of this is going to be <laughs> uh relatively important for that but i'm curious have you guys heard anything about what's happening with that side of things obviously they've gone and done comics and whatnot but has there been any updates regarding uh the show they're working on uh the show has run into several different delays with the, the writer strike that happened right 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 initially they thought maybe it wouldn't spill over but then there was um kind of a animation studios like struck in solidarity with the rest of the group there so that kind of put everything on hold so i know that there has still been there's have been talks and i, I think um i think there was a, an offer to the team uh to actually have the show made uh with some vc money but uh, with the way Forgotten Ruins wants to set up their IP and have the the holders have IP rights to their characters if their characters are featured in 
any other media expressions, they're they're going to have a, a, a kickback on that, a return of some funds. But I think they weren't able to quite work out the deals in the way that they wanted to do it. But um, I haven't heard a lot of updates since then. I know it's still it's still something that's active and ongoing. But uh, it feels like right now the the comic is out monthly, and the the Runiverse game is getting a lot of the the media attention now that they're they're pushing it out. But I, I can assume some things are happening in the in the background, but. Uh, from, from my standpoint as a community member, I, I don't have much more. No, no, that's fair. And, and if anybody is wanting to hear from the founders, I do have a video up on my channel uh, from, I want to say, almost like a year ago uh, with Elf and Bear that's uh, super uh, informative. And it, it's interesting also to see because before... Uh, well, two guests before, I guess, in Phil, uh, Tad, we were kind of talking about how, you know, for Yuga, the expectations of, hey, they've got this metaverse and everybody's able to see how long that they've taken for that. And, you know, for the shows and everything else, people realize, hey, you know, there, it's not, it doesn't happen instantly overnight, but some of these things are coming together and they are uh, potentially going to uh, revolutionize or capture the attention of the mainstream. So I'm curious for you, what is the thing if I'm like, hey, show me your favorite part about Rooneyverse with the forgotten runes wizard cult overall etc uh what would be the rationale for me jumping in there um if i'm well if i'm looking for myself personally what i'm the most excited about is the game uh that's coming the play test was was really interesting it was it was fun it's just it was a small slice of of one aspect of it there's you know the next play test is coming out and in, in um the end of this month beginning of next month and i think that's a way that it's it's went into development almost two years ago. So almost as soon as this project launched, they they got that underway. So it, it's not just something that's been thrown together by a small indie studio. It's a you know it's it's a legitimate large scale operation, um, you know, multiplayer game. And I feel like the way that it's been done utilizes blockchain technology and has a lot of off ramps that can help people. Uh, you know, it can, can help you utilize crypto as well, but it's not necessary. So uh, the the ability to play the game without needing a digital wallet, without having to have any Web3 login to be able to uh, just tap into the wider community of gamers, I think is is probably the thing that I'm most excited about. I think that's something that uh, has the opportunity to catch a lot of potential market share. Uh, the the graphics are great. The gameplay was really fun. It was very engaging. Obviously, it was it was early, so there's a lot of things to still add into it. But um, a lot of us in the Wizards group are old RuneScape or EverQuest or World of Warcraft players. At, at least at some point, have have experienced some part of that online community and the the adventure narrative that comes with like online gaming of that that scale. So I could see easily how something like that could really propel. Um, you know, something, an NFT collection into the wider dance of the media, or, you know, have it, have people see it from a, a larger view. Uh, the comic book, I think, is, is super cool. And I think as far as telling a story and getting it out there, and um, it's going to be the first thing from Forgotten Ruins that actually comes out that utilizes uh, their formalized agreement with something they've called Binary Star. And that's their IP share with their um, with the holders of the wizard tokens. Any wizard that is featured in the comic, is, depending on how large a role, how many words they say, how many pages they're featured in, will somehow factor into an equation. They're actually going to get cut money from the sales of the comic. So it hasn't. We're on the third issue is coming out now, so the royalties from the first haven't been paid out, but that check's coming soon. So I think that's something that I, I'm really interested to see one, like how I don't even know how much it may or may not be, or, you know, like what's the what's the context for the, the reward. But uh, I do think that's something that has not has been talked about a lot within the Web3 and NFT space about a crossover utility, about people being very worried about what IP ownership they have with it. But um, I, I think some ability to directly monetize or see other people within your project uh, having gained just from ownership of that, I think is something that uh, could potentially turn some heads. So I, I think that even though I feel like the comic is probably more of a marketing just to get more people aware of the project, I doubt it's a big money maker on its own. I think that the the way that it could be utilized or the, the way that it could kind of be a, a, a way of showing how this can work and how this royalty payback to to holders could work might be something that that's really interesting, especially from 
like someone outside looking in, like why would this project, why would this project be sustainable and why would this project grow over time? But I think they have so many different things in the works with the TV show, with the game, with the comic book, and none of them have been done in a way and not, not to throw any shade anywhere. It's very difficult to do things like this nature high scale, but not in a way that's happened within Web3, because honestly, it takes years to be able to get something to a true launchable, like worldwide commercially available state. So I, I think there's a lot of things that they have coming that have been worked on for two years, almost two and a half years, and are finally coming to delivery. And and that's something where I'm I'm excited for this year because the game's going to be coming out. There's quarterly releases. The comic's already hitting the shelves monthly. Hopefully we'll have more news about um, this animation, about a show somehow getting in the works or at least getting a pilot. And I just think with all those different things happening, it it creates a really strong narrative and it shows the 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 amount of work that the team has put into building and the network that they have and I, I think it's often this space measures things a lot in speculation and, and considering what may happen but I I feel like this is is definitely a project for myself I I see that they are building and have been doing some really really amazing things and have done a lot of kind of like industry firsts here so I I hope that in Kind of on the back end, they get some of the, you know, some of the the positive feedback on some of the things that they have done because it's it's hard to build in this space. People want everything to be here immediately, and and honestly, to do something, to do something that has a, a crossover to legacy web two sorts of things, things take a lot of time, and and uh, I think that's the challenge of, of working between a very fast nature meme coin situation and trying to to build a, a two and a half year video game with a, another company it's just there's there's a lot of different dynamics within the web3 world and i feel like uh forgotten runs is very well stationed to kind of take advantage of the strengths of web3 but also has a good network to lean back into some of those legacy media models and web web2 it's funny that we're funny is not the correct term, but when you look at the broader NFT space is it feels like all of the collections that are still around right now that have any kind of notoriety are really trying to be involved or offer something for everybody, right? When we look at Forgotten Runes, we have the video games, we have the comics, we have the animation where, okay, that's, you know, three different things. But then also they have the community lore aspect, which is broken down into, I'm not exactly sure if it's the same as with some of the characters within the comics, if your lore ends up getting used later on, or if it's just kind of a, you know, a side piece with that. But I think that it is, inter it is interesting that we are now starting to see uh, those royalties going back to holders, where I know for Pudgy Penguins, they had some of the Pudgies that ended up going into the stores. They had that for Zuki. I saw some kind of reference uh, for them that if you want to audition for something, uh, they're starting to open that up. And it's kind of like a, a trickle down effect and seeing uh, that happen, I think is amazing. But Forgotten Runes has done a couple of different things, including uh, one of the Halloween hunts. I'm not sure if that was the correct term that they use for that, but do you participate in it or no yeah the uh the nightmare imp yes uh, yes yes <laughs> uh, we, we, we did it a, a couple of different times uh, are you talking about the trick-or-treat event yes 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 yeah that that was was really cool I'm, they've done they've done so many really interesting things i'm not i'm not super uh brainiac on the the contract end but some of the things that they have done within this community are just so impressive to me uh, what well, you were mentioning, the book of lore, the it's an it's an on chain document that stores all the the lore and the stories of these characters and everyone with a, a warrior, a wizard, or a pony, or a soul even can upload their um, their story directly into this book. And then it was from that media and that content that they actually drew all the storylines that are utilized in the comic. So it's like they they aren't directly one for one, but the the narrative and some of the um, you know, some of the direct content that was used or the storylines that were modified were from the community's direct input that they put into the books themselves. So it, you know, it's, it's a really cool crossover with the community. And um, I think over time as well, I, I feel like it was it was a big discussion point last last cycle. And there's been a lot of other metas that have pushed it out. But the I think it's really impressive how much of what the Wizards has done is, is actually fully on chain. So the, the wizards themselves can be reorganized with some code that's fully available on Ether. So 
So as long as that network stays up and active, the, the wizards are eternal. It's not pointing to uh, IPFS storage or something of that nature. There's no there's no way for, for the wizards to collapse in the same way. And I, I, I always thought that was a really cool part of the, the eternity of this project and kind of the, the, the foresight of the founders to want to have something that was going to be that um, you know, be able to withstand the the test of time and not just be done the easiest way. I think they've they've kind of proven to me really over time that that's just kind of how they do things. That's how they roll. And TrueCon, what's going on? Yes, we are back. And for everybody watching, tuned in live right now, thanks so much for tuning in. If you're wanting to give a share, maybe a like, that'd be amazing. We're talking with Tad Major right now about Forgotten Runes Wizards Cult. And they've recently done a mint on Ordinals. And I saw that they were doing kind of another one where they have the shadows uh, and the lights, maybe Illuminati's. I'm forgetting the name right now. But I know I saw Bear tweet about it the other day. Uh, what's what's the lowdown with Forgotten Runes expanding over? over to ordinals is this something that is just specifically for that community have you heard of any quote-unquote utility for this or what's kind of the notion around that yeah so the when, when ordinals came about dota being uh, really kind of on top of, of web3 coding and, and kind of in he's he's i don't know i'm very impressed with how much he he knows about different things and how on top of of new technology he is he was very very early um into the inscription age and has several i know sub 1000 inscriptions and uh it was it was something that we were talking about a lot a lot within our discord server in those those early early days and weeks of ordinals so um they they saw it as an opportunity that it may be some sort of new meta new narrative so um they got ahead of it and they they had always they'd always kept back the, the shadow hats, the, the dark hats, the dark magic users of the Runiverse. And it wasn't, it, there wasn't a fully fleshed out plan of how they would be leaked out, but they just knew that it wasn't, it wasn't right to have them part of the full collection. They kind of needed to be hidden away. They needed to kind of have their own access. So um, when Ordinals came and, and became popularized, it, it, it became the, the perfect opportunity to utilize that quantum shadow crossover with a you know a narrative of a different chain pairing up with our ether collection so the shadows were born through a really unique inscription process that i, I couldn't fully explain but it's the the parent child where they had 10 original shadow hats that they made they're all sub 10k ordinal no they're all sub 1000 uh ordinal so very early events and through those they're all the Inscriptions that are part of the 666 Shadows collection are all somehow inscribed through these other uh, earlier sets, and they're, they're all on set 666, and there's this, um, some really cool things in the packing that they did. I, I couldn't fully explain it to you because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that much of a tech person on that side, but um, they did a lot of really unique and interesting things in the background of how all of those shadows were made. Not to mention, they're also an animated GIF that's on the you know the blockchain on Bitcoin. That's I think one of the very first collections to use any sort of moving imagery. Um, so when it when it came out, it was it was something to be a counter to the light. You know, something that spilled out of this within the universe. We have this uh, large stretch of blocked out area, and it's just called the quantum shadow, and it it just represents who knows. It represents darkness. It represents potentially evil, maybe just benevolence, maybe just uh, something negative. But uh, so the shadows were the representation of beings that have come out of that quantum shadow. Um, so that's kind of how they came out. And I think they just saw it as a good, a, an interesting way to utilize the, the Bitcoin narrative that was happening and to, to kind of pair up a collection. Um, I, I do still think it's been it's been difficult because the communities are, are very different. Uh, pulling a Bitcoin community into an Ether community that's been long-standing has been a challenge, just because the the current meta of Bitcoin ordinal narrative is not how uh, two and a half year old Ether project is running. You know, it's not a vibe party. It's not full of just like hype and and uh, you know, kind of pumped up things. It's you know, okay, we're two and a half years in and we're building, and these are the projects that are in queue and and things are are still coming so as far as the utility for the shadows i feel like that was something that the community looked for some sort of immediate 
return or some some sort of thing that they were going to get that week that month and uh, the reality is they're going to be a part of the ecosystem, but it's a it's a long standing large project. So it's it's something that's probably going to take time to get them worked in fully to the different parts. But I would assume within uh, I know within the show, the shadows themselves have some high roles of, of being kind of the, you know, the counterparties, the evil side of it. Um, but past that, I don't. I don't know much else other than they'll be, you know, they're a full part of the Forgotten Ruins, you know, project. They'll be used. They'll have IP ownership. They'll have the ability to to create and and market their their stuff just like the rest of the cult. And they do do a weekly space, by the way. So if you guys are enjoying what Tad's kind of breaking down here, Elf, Bear, Snake, and Dota, I think it, when you look across the space, it's interesting to see how many founders are just an individual. Sometimes it's two. Uh, and in this case, it's kind of three that are spearheading, uh, taking everything uh, on by uh, the group of themselves. But uh, Tad, I want to kind of shift to from a new person that's like, hey, I want to get into the ecosystem. There's a lot to go over. Just a reminder for anybody that's viewing, if you do check out my YouTube page, I do have a specific playlist for Forgotten Runes, and we kind of go over this with the founders if you want to see from that angle. But, I mean, what's the what do you do? You're like, okay, I want to like get into the wizard cult. You look, there's Forgotten Runes, and then what do you base that off of? You go for the head, you go for the body, uh, the rune. What's the, what's the kind of alpha, I guess, if you will? Oh man, it's it's a it's a tough one. Uh, the probably the best mantra for for that is like like wizard by wizard. Um, and it's, <laughs> Hell yeah! It, uh, honestly, the I would say personally, I, I look at the I look at the head first um, to get one that that I, I vibe with. Um, but for me, really, just the the collection itself has inherent uh, aesthetics to it that are just really. Some different outfits really vibe. Some heads look great with specific bodies or specific props or different things. So it's it's hard just to look for just one thing and say like, oh, look for a, a wizard that has this and and you'll like it. But basically, the you know look for a wizard that you vibe with because the the whole purpose of getting a wizard is to 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 collect a token that's going to inspire you to create something that makes you want to tell a story or generate some art or get on Dali or do something to to tr try to just create something, some narrative around this thing. And um, so I don't really think that there there isn't a bad wizard because there's always there's always some part of it that could really call to a certain person. And there's a lot of there's a lot of different traits. I can't remember how many. There's probably a hundred heads. There's so many varieties of um different magic users, different location origins and all these these things that tie into it. But um I will say as a community there are there are some that they wear hats and we just call them the wizard hats. There's seven different ones. They represent the different colors of wizards. So we'll we'll call like a blue wizard would be a blue hat wizard. Um so they're I would say within those those colored hat wizards are some of the the most prized. Um I like some of the non-human heads. The 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 mush. There's a mushroom head, and uh, there's a kobold. Looks kind of like a half orc. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of different fun like non-humanoid. We have a fire head that's probably probably a big favorite for a lot of people. Um, but honestly, with with how detailed it is and how many different attributes there are, um, I, I really think that. You you could almost find a wizard with any trait that was that looked great. You know, like maybe maybe you don't like all of them, but I couldn't just say like, oh, choose this one head and it's gonna it's gonna be everything they want because there's a lot of other pieces that go into it. Um, Awesome. All right. Well, Tad, I want to kind of open the floor here. If people should follow you, give them the rundown. What What does Tad tweet about? Why should they follow you? We got it up here on the screen, guys. If you want to check them out, it's at Tad Major, and we've we've highlighted uh, Forgotten Runes here momentarily as well. But uh, what's the lowdown here, Tad? What do you What do you tweet about? Um. Honestly, at the, at the moment, the majority of my tweets are going to be a lot of retweeting, farming, and protocol sort of things I'm facing around. Hell yeah! Uh, so I, I do, I do feel a little bit sorry for anyone trying to stumble into my feed at the moment. I, for a few months, I was going back through, and every day I would just clean it back up. But I, I've decided I'll just wait till the end of the season. Um, but outside of of that shill garbage that I throw out there, my apologies. I do. Um, 
I haven't been doing as much of it lately, but I do really love making some pixel animation. So after oh. joining joining Forgotten Ruins, taught myself how to make some um, frame animations on Asprite, and then from there have have used several of the different AI software packages and asset generators, and and just using those and video editing and, and back into pixel software and just kind of exploring. Um, motion between different medias, I guess, would be the easiest way to say. I'd probably do more pixel art than anything um, in an animated form. Uh, but really, I, I, I like going between different resolutions and uh, just kind of uh, try to create something fun. When, you know, for my stuff, you'll usually, usually it's a 10 or 15 second uh, little animated loop. Uh, it's usually something funny, something a little bit cheesy. Uh, I keep it pretty light. Uh, like you're, you're likely going to see a lot of bright colors, some iridescent tones. Uh, I tend to to feature pretty heavily, but that, and then uh, you'll probably see some a lot of retweets of, of Forgotten Ruins related things, or uh, some art from maybe uh, Alpha Century Kid or Ender Ganarman, or a couple of my couple of my favorites that I, I follow pretty closely. Nice. Love it. All right. Well, guys, if you're wanting to follow Tad, it's at Tad Major. Tad, I appreciate you coming on and shilling us Forgotten Ruins Wizard Call. And again, if anybody has any uh, questions, be sure to hit up Tad regarding that. But thank you so much, sir, for jumping on here today. Hey, thank you. It was an absolute pleasure. Have a happy Friday. Yeah, you as well. You as well. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon. Peace, peace.